I want to welcome to the show the legendary Robert Slack. How are you, mate? I'm doing great, doing great. So uh, good to be here. Yeah, yeah. You are actually the inspiration behind this podcast. Um, I heard your story whew, four or five months ago, and it still just blows my mind. It blows mine too, okay? So <laughs> just as long as you know, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's yourself and, a, and another a dear friend of ours. Um, I think you know him quite well. Um, Long Doan out of Minnesota. Yep. He also yeah. has another incredible story. So, um, yeah, let's, you know, before we dive into it, um, I wouldn't mind just setting the stage a little bit, letting people know where you are with your business today. And then we're going to go backwards from that. So, uh, <clears throat> basically, we cover all of Florida. Uh, we're in uh, 716 zip codes. Um, and um, we pretty much just buy leads from realtor.com which uh, has been pretty good for us because as soon as the lead comes in, we retarget them on um, Ylopo and we set them up on the AI texting campaigns. Uh, and it's been really good. We do uh, also supplement those leads from Realtor with uh, leads from Ylopo, uh, which uh, being that they're mostly Facebook leads, they take a little longer to actually mature. But we are closing a lot of deals and have a good ROI from the Wailopo leads now. So uh, we currently close about uh, just under 400 deals a month for about, give or take, about $100 million a month, uh, which uh, is pretty good. Uh, blows my mind too. I don't know how I got here, but anyway, I did. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. So, uh, but uh, yeah, so we do about just under 400 deals for about 100 million each month so it's it's good what's your uh, monthly marketing spend you'd say for lead generation oh god so, uh, i'm currently up to eight million a year with realtor.com which is a mind-blowing number and about 40 or fifty thousand a month with ylopo um, we try, we always have about another half a dozen minor lead sources, uh, of which Zillow is one, extremely minor. Um, and um, we, we're always trying a few out to see how it works, but, but that's the bulk of our business. So, And we are a lead-driven um, company. Uh, we don't go out and knock on doors or stuff mailboxes or anything like that. We are lead driven. We get about 800 leads a day. Uh, we uh, have a call center, uh, which calls every one of those leads within two seconds. And um, we, of course, we put them on the Wailopo campaigns. And since we did that, uh, we've seen a dramatic increase in our closings, which is the object of the exercise. So, uh, so it's, been, it's been really good. I noticed you're number two on the real trends list for 2018. Teams. Yeah, I'm bummed out. I don't do number twos very well, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's looking like um, you're pretty much a shoe in for number one, would you say, for 2019? And, and what are those, you know, are you 4,000 plus at this stage, are you estimating? Yeah, we just, uh, <clears throat> we're just, uh, we're over 2,000 uh, halfway through the year. Uh, so we're, we're looking at about 4,000 for this year. We were number two on the list last year with uh, 2,500. Uh, so that was quite gratifying. Um, but um, we just, uh, I, I prefer to be number one. So we should do around a billion dollars this year uh, and about uh, 4,000 transactions. Wow. Well, that's impressive. So I think what's even impressive, even more impressive is um, you've really only been at this for the last five years, right? Or a little bit under. Yeah, so it, uh, we opened um, the brokerage uh, on uh, 2014, on the 1st of October, with uh, four newly licensed agents. And uh, we just kept rocketing from then. Initially, we used to tell people we'd give them 50 leads a month, and then we cut it back to 40. Um, and uh, we just kept on hiring and firing, and there's been a lot of both. Uh, um, and... Uh, these days, what we've found is that we're able to give them less leads and they just convert as many deals because 
Whereas we used to give them 40 leads and we're getting hold of 30% of these people, of the leads. So they were actually talking to 12 people a month. Uh, today, we give them maybe 30 leads, but that may also be too many because they're actually contacting about 75% of these because of our programs with Wailopo. And so they're actually talking to 22 people a month. And that in a lot of cases is too many leads to give someone, uh, too many new people, 22 people, uh, is too many customers a month for them to handle. So we're looking down the road at quite possibly going to 20 to 25 leads a month. And we just, we don't buy any less leads, we just hire more people. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so before I go too deep into what you've done in the last five years in the mortgage space, I'm just a little bit curious, um, you know, you've got that, that fabulous accent there. You obviously uh, kind of, you know, I'm kind of uh, uh, trending on yours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the other side. I'm, I'm the right side up world, you know, so. Yeah, you're from, from the, the Queensland. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, obviously you're English. Um, and, you know, I did a little bit of research on you. You've been here, you came in 1979, is that correct? That's 40 yeah, years ago? Yeah, yeah. And what brought you to the States? Well, there was just, there was a lot more opportunity here than what there was in England. At the time, there was nothing happening in England. There was no business. Everything was dead. The weather is terrible. Uh, the food is not that great. Uh, it wasn't those days. So it's like, why did I need to stay? You know, I, I used to. I had an aunt in California and they grew peaches and I thought that was just wonderful. So first of all, I came to California and, and uh, kind of uh, lost my shirt growing peaches and uh, then decided I'm going to go back to the other side and go to uh, Florida. Well, in fact, I was heading for Kentucky, if the truth was known, but I took a right in Nashville instead of a left and ended up in Florida. So, uh, so uh, and I've been here ever since 1996. And what was it uh, that drew you to Florida other than, you know, the warm weather? So at the, at the, when we left California, we were thinking we're going to buy a thoroughbred horse farm in Kentucky. We spent a winter in Nashville and the, the weather with ice storms and everything. My wife said, I'm not going further north than this. and I want to go south. I need some sun. So we discovered that they also had horse farms in, uh, in uh, Florida. So it's like, let's go to Florida, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> we came down for a weekend, took a look, found a farm we liked, and a month later we we're living on it. So, so it was good. Had the farm till uh, night uh, till two thousand and six. Sold the farm, blew the money, and uh, how'd you blow the money? Oh well, you know when I'm up on stage, sometimes I sometimes say that uh, I spend half of it on women and booze, and the rest I just wasted. You know so. But I'm not Australian, so people know that's not the truth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just bad investments in 08 and 09 and whatever, and pretty much blew it all. So uh, as the story goes, I ended up selling used cars, which absolutely is not fun at any stage of your life, particularly if you're 65 years old. So, And uh, so that's where I was in uh, 2013, 12 and 13. So not fun. Wow. Wow. So you're selling used cars, you're 65, you're in Florida. Um, the wife's still with you. Yep. Yep. She stuck through there through thick and thin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, um, she, what, what you... to see what, she, she actually hung around to see what was going to happen next, you know? So <laughs> yeah. And did, did you have any idea? Did you have, what was your game plan? I mean, were you just trying well, to wing game it? The plan was this, Aaron, yep. that, I was so depressed selling used cars that one night I sat down with a sheet of paper at the kitchen table and tried to figure out what I could do in my old age that, that other than sell used cars that would provide me enough money to buy groceries. And so real estate came to the top. So I uh, applied for a real estate license online for like 79 bucks. So I couldn't afford to fail it. So, uh, we got through the first time. Um, the only thing was that uh, in my research, I'd forgot to dig out that uh, you had to join the MLS, which was about a thousand dollars. And the broker that I had my license with wouldn't front me the money for the uh, MLS. So it took me about six months to join the MLS. 
And uh, then I joined the MLS and said, well, so where do I get customers from? And uh, it kind of, I didn't do anything for about six months. So then one day I'm, uh, I'm home and uh, the phone rings and it's a uh, uh, salesman from Zillow. And uh, yeah, Robert, I got all these, uh, these leads in this zip code, 34476, and you can have them for 168 bucks a month. You could be selling real estate tomorrow. I thought, my God, that sounds good. But the only thing is, I don't have $168 in the bank. But the saving grace was, my wife was gone, but a credit card was home. And so I, I'm going to do this. I'll just put it on a credit card. She'll never know. Okay, so I jumped in uh, with Zillow. And, uh, and, and to be honest, those days, it was really good. And Zillow was very good. Uh, and true to his word, I got a ton of leads. I chased after them as though they were going to be the last lead I ever got. And uh, pretty quickly, I had three or four pending. And I thought, this is a breeze, you know. Um, and so, but true to form, the salesman called back about a month later and said, how's it going? I said, hey, it's going really well. Well, I just happened to have the zip code next to it. I've got 25% of that available and you could have that for $180 a month. Why not? Okay, same, same credit card. Let's go. So, uh, cut a long story short, fairly quickly, I was getting more leads than I could handle, so I needed a team. <laughs> I went from uh, doing nothing to having a team in about six months. And my team was all brand new agents. And, uh, but anyway, we instituted what we called experiential training. You got training through experience, the experience of showing homes. So I'm going to send you out, you're going to sell homes, be they single wides or whatever. So you're going to learn as you go along. And uh, that's how we got started. 14th of October, uh, sorry, 1st of October, 2014. Um, opened the brokerage because the one I was with was nickel and diming me to death. So, uh, so we, we cranked it up, started advertising for agents. I advertised everywhere that was cheap, Craigslist, whatever. And if you had a tank of gas and a real estate license, you were pretty much guaranteed a job, you know? So, and, um, the only bad thing was at the end of the first year, I had about 40 agents, but I figured I needed to get rid of about 35 of them. And uh, because they weren't closing the leads well enough. It's um, uh, when you're taking agents and you're not too picky, then you kind of end up with some people that uh, are not working the leads. So, um, Did you ever have any coaching or get a, have a mentor or anyone through all of this? Or are you pretty much trying to figure it all out by yourself? I mean, so I never had a mentor. Uh, I had a, I'd been going to a school for about the previous 50 years, the school of hard knocks. And so I just couldn't afford to screw up, you know, because uh, I didn't have the, uh, <laughs> if I didn't sell any real estate, I couldn't pay Zillow and I knew they'd cut me off. So, uh, so we just had to get it done. We learned what worked. And one thing we always, we started off with follow up boss when we first started as a CRM, we still have it today. Um, and speed to lead was our mantra. And in those days, nobody else cared. You know, they were buying Zillow leads and if they called back, called back within three or four days, that was fine with us. It always had to be quick. And uh, so, so in, uh, in no time, we were starting to sell quite a few homes. And I think, uh, I think we sold like, in our first full year, we did like 250, which for us was a lot of homes. Um, and uh, so it's, we just kept going from there and, uh, pretty much the same principles um, and uh, we give our people a good share of lead, leads. We uh, treat our agents fairly and uh, treat our clients fairly and uh, just kept rolling. So it sounds like your strategy today isn't really that much different other than you've added all the technology for the remarketing and stuff than what you were doing in the past. Is that correct? No, it's just gone from two zip codes. So the interesting thing was because I never worked for any of the big franchises, so I never got indoctrinated with their way of doing business. You know, I'm not going to, to knock on doors and, you know, stand in the supermarket and give my card out or stuff mailboxes or call expireds or call Fizbo's or whatever. We've never done that. We'll sell 4,000 homes this year 
and not one of them will be from uh, calling an expired or a FISBO or handing our cards out or, or whatever. We've just, we've been just a lead driven business. And um, so I never got the idea that, the, that I was working my farm. And so my farm was Florida. And that's where I, I had a license that covered all of Florida. Why wouldn't I work all of it? And so um, I used to go wherever the zip codes were the right price and available, and I could get agents to work them. And 120 days after uh, we opened the brokerage, I was buying some zip codes in Fort Lauderdale because I found uh, two agents down there that wanted to work for me. And uh, I was buying zip codes in Fort Lauderdale then. So now we've got zip codes all the way from, uh, from Pensacola to Key West, uh, which is about the same distance as New York to Detroit. Uh, so it's a, a long state, is Florida, and uh, it seems to go very well. And we, we've learned that the the absolute best zip codes for online leads are uh, uh, 200 to 400, um, 200,000 to 400,000. The very high end are much trickier. The very low end, uh, there is not in, uh, enough people that want to work them. So, uh, so those are the, uh, the zip codes that we like. Was there ever a stage where you felt like, oh shit, you know, I may be losing uh, control of all this. I've got to potentially, you know, things are going sideways. Or do you, was it just smaller bumps along the road and you're always able to overcome them? Well, I started on Zillow and about a year and a half into that, I was really struggling to pay my Zillow. Mm. And uh, I just about thought I'm going to lose it all because I was not generating enough money. They'd had a, uh, well, they'd merged with Trulia, so... A third of my spend was going to Trulia, so I had to increase it by 50% just to get as many leads. Then they went to uh, uh, market-based pricing, so they called it, which really wasn't. But anyway, it, it, uh, it was just a way that the leads doubled again. And so I wasn't getting enough income to pay my outgoings. And I just about blew it. And so um, I got a call from, well, I, I happened to be... Uh, they did a, a story on me in Inman, and uh, you're probably familiar with Kevin Markarian. So the same uh, story, they used Kevin because he was processing realtor leads, and I was doing Zillow leads. So I picked the phone up and called Kevin, and we had a chat. So he introduced me to Realtor.com, and uh, I dropped Zillow and, because I was getting twice as many leads for the money on Realtor.com. Zillow weren't very happy. I was on the uh, uh, agent advisory board at that time, but they soon put an end to that. So uh, <laughs> and I became persona non grata real quick with them. So, um, and we started on realtor.com with about 20,000 a month. And uh, we've just kept adding from there. And uh, it's, it's worked very well. Um. So what's one piece of advice, um, you know, that you would give to your audience um, that you've sort of learnt over the last few years based on the way that the market is today? I mean. So, uh, well, A, I'm not sure I could build this again. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, I do think online leads are still the way to go. However, do not buy online leads and then bitch and moan because you're not closing them if you don't have the systems in place to handle them. That's like buying a Mercedes and not having the money for gas. Okay? So if you don't have the, the systems to get back to these leads quickly, then you shouldn't even go there. Because with the, the likes of myself, and there's lots of other companies around, lots of other brokers around that have instituted call centers. We have 16 uh, people in our call center that call these leads back in two seconds. So like, for example, realtor are split leads. And so if you're getting the other half of my lead, if you're not on the phone to these people within two seconds, we're already got an appointment to show them the home. 92% are gonna go with the person that they talk to first. So if you don't have the processes in place, then don't go with online leads because it's it's not gonna work. And and the, the chat rooms on Facebook are full of people 
complaining about the, the lack of uh, success with online leads. And uh, it's not the online leads fault. And in fact, right from the start, uh, we had a, a guy who used to do some of our training a little bit. He was a fairly new agent, but he was quite good at it. And, and when people called about the leads, we had a standard saying, it's never the leads. It's always you. And it's the, the fact that you're not engaging with the client uh, or you can't engage with the client because they've already engaged with somebody else and they beat you to it, that that's the issue. So um, it's definitely speed to lead more than ever. Gotcha. So we've seen Realtor.com, um, Zillow, a few of the portals change their business, business models fairly significantly in the last 12 months. Um, I know you haven't been horribly affected as of this point in time, <laughs> but how do you see, you know, the next 12 months panning out and what are you doing to pivot for that? So I'm not pivoting at all. We just keep buying more because realistically we spend so much money with realtor.com these days that I think they'd be hard pressed to cut our lead supply off and give it to somebody that they don't know whether they're going to convert or not. And, and I think that, uh, uh, it's a generally accepted fact that Top City hasn't been such a roaring success for them that they're going to take everybody's leads and give them to Top City. Uh, and uh, so I think we've kind of, I've just never believed that I was going to lose the leads. So uh, even a year ago when they announced that they bought Top City, um, uh, I never I, I never lost a minute's sleep about it. Um, Maybe my partner did, and <laughs> but uh, and I, and I should uh, I have mentioned my partner, but because without him, <clears throat> I wouldn't have grown to the size I am now. So, about uh, two and a half years ago, um, I told you I bought leads all over the states. I bought leads down in Orlando, and um, um, there was this uh, smart young man down there called uh, Dan Walters. And uh, he was in the Dr. Phillips area. And I thought, wow, they've got $300,000 homes. And I live in a zip code where the average price is 100. Um, and the leads are only $27. I should be selling homes down there. I can be on the freeway. I can be there in an hour. So I started, um, my Zillow profile started popping up in his area. And he thought that was his area. And uh, pretty soon he He's calling me to see who I was, you know. So uh, anyway, we, we formed a good friendship. And uh, the fact is that uh, I invited him to join forces with me. And uh, he came on and became chief operating officer. And uh, without uh, him coming on, there's no question we couldn't, we wouldn't be at the size we were now because, because of my age had kind of stalled out a little bit. We stalled out at maybe... 30 or 40,000 a month. And I just uh, didn't have enough energy to run everything. So, and we've added a lot of other good people since then. We've tripled our agent count. We've added a marketing director. Um, we're always looking for a new technology like Ylopo. And so we have a, a systems integration specialist uh, who integrates all our new systems uh, into uh, for our agents. And we have a recruiting manager. Uh, we have 10 team leaders who each have up to 50 agents. And uh, uh, they do a very good job. And uh, without that uh, hierarchy that, uh, that we've built, then we couldn't have got to where we are today. Can you mention just some of the technology that you use? You're, obviously, you mentioned Ylopo, but I know there's, there's follow-up boss and uh, some other key sort of players in there. Uh, so <clears throat> we started um, uh, with Follow Up Boss, and we've uh, we still have it today. Uh, Dan Corkill has done a very good job with it. And, uh, um, then the, the leads come from Realtor.com. They go simultaneously out to Ilopo for the retargeting. Uh, we also use a company called Squad Voice, uh, which gets hold of our. Um, leads that we've been able to, we have not been able to make contact with. And they uh, make contact with some of them and do a live handoff and they charge us for the live handoffs. And they're a very smart bunch of uh, young men that have it. And uh, I've great faith that we're going to do continuing business with them. 
We also use a company called Client Giant, uh, and uh, we use them for uh, providing uh, closing gifts for all of our uh, closings. And uh, they're not inexpensive, but they do a very good job. We can uh, we use them for our clients retaining top of mind, as we call it. Uh, so they send them birthday cards and Christmas presents and everything like that so that we always stay connected with our clients. Uh, we're using uh, Z-Buyer a little bit. We're using, uh, uh, we do a little, uh, a very small amount of Zillow. We spend 500 bucks a month for them. Um, we, um, we have two or three other that are in the infancy, but uh, nothing very much. Do a little bit of pay-per-click, uh, but not a lot. And um, uh, that's about it, really. Gotcha, gotcha. So, I mean, you've come a long way in the last five years. What, what's the end game look like for you? I mean, what are you picturing here? I mean... <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, the end game has changed somewhat because... Uh, um, we were approached by one of the national chains not long ago, and he pretty much told us, well, nobody's going to buy you because it would cost too much. You've kind of got too big because nobody wants to buy a company that's doing a billion a year. And so the end game is kind of still out there somewhere. I'm not sure there is one. Uh, my daughter, who is uh, 31, is involved in the business. Uh, Dan Walters, who is 20 odd years younger than I am, so... Uh, he enjoys the business. We're, um, we have two title companies. Uh, we have a mortgage company. Uh, so we, we're pretty much fully integrated. Uh, we are actually looking at another company uh, with a view to maybe buying them. I'm not sure there is an end game. You know, uh, it's just like, why the hell stop now? We're having so much fun, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, um, with all that fun and all that success, have you been able to um, buy yourself anything nice? What have you gone out and spurged on? So, well, I don't can't, can't call it spurging. <laughs> well, I, I do drive a nice car every day. I have a four-door Maserati Quattroporti, which is my daily driver. Uh, it's not that it's no more expensive than a Suburban. Uh, I do also invest in thoroughbreds, and that is kind of my hobby. Hmm. But there's a reason for that is that <clears throat> they're hundred percent tax deductible the day I buy them. And uh, so I've been able to offset a lot of my taxes uh, with them. And uh, I've got uh, uh, about a dozen broodmares in Kentucky. I've got about a dozen at the track and uh, it actually is a hobby that uh, makes quite a bit of money and uh, alleviates my tax issues. So, but apart from that, you know, the funny thing is I've gone through life with never having much money and always thinking of all the things I could do when I had some money. So now we have very good cash flow. It's like, nah, hell, there's much I want to do anymore. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, some nice real estate? You must see some gorgeous houses down there. Well, I don't get to see them. I sit behind this screen doing podcasts for uh, guys like you and Howard, you know, so. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, this has been fascinating. Um, you're an incredible person. Um, I admire you immensely. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I think you're still just getting going. I mean, the numbers you're going to hit this year are through the roof crazy. So it's really yeah, exciting. We've generally been about 60% year over year, our increases. And we just plan on doing, keep going doing that, you know, so, and we don't see any reason at this point where we can't do that for the next several years to come. Of course, we can't do it without guys like you and Howard bringing up this uh, and G because G does a wonderful job. And uh, so we just need these increases in technology. And, and a lot of our competitors are so far behind on technology. You know, I mean, when I talk to some of my friends about, you know, artificial information and, and uh, intelligence and they they're just, well, you know, what's that, you know, and it's, it just, it's kind of mind blowing, you know, so, uh, but it's definitely uh, a sign of the times and uh, if you want to grow your business, you can't do it without it. So we appreciate everything you guys do.
Yeah. So obviously, you know, you're, you're growing and you're hiring. Um, you know, if someone's listening to the podcast, what type of candidates are you looking for? So we like people who've had the license for maybe a minimum of three months. Sometimes we hire a brand new agent. We like people who've got hustle. And uh, because without hustle and without that desire, they're going nowhere. We don't like people who've, you know, been with one of the big companies for 30 years. Those are not the ones we're looking for. We'd rather have someone that's had the license for three months than 30 years. Because the, 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 the agents who've been in it for 30 years are used to doing it the old way. And we have a hard time converting them to do it our way. The, the, the younger they are, and <laughs> yes, I'm saying the younger they are, and I'm 72, okay? So everybody's younger than me, I get it. Um, but but uh, the younger they are, the more open they are to uh, new technology. And um, they, they just generally have more energy. And what we do, our agents need to have a lot of energy because they're busy all the time. And, uh, and so energy and hustle, very important. Perfect, perfect. And they need to be uh, in the office there or can they work remotely? No, not at all. Yep. Because they're not selling anything in the office. I've seen, uh, so I'm in our uh, main office today. I've seen zero agents in this office today. So, and, and, and we have three offices. We're in Orlando and we're in uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, and this one here in Ocala. And most of our offices see very few agents because they need to be out showing property. And uh, the Fort Lauderdale office gets a, a little more um, visits from the agents, but basically Orlando and Ocala rarely ever see an agent. We pay our agents at the closing table so they don't have to come to the office to get a check. And uh, it's, uh, we're totally paperless, so they're not bringing in contracts. Uh, I always joke, uh, you know, we're going to do a billion dollars, but we don't own the file cabinet. So uh, it's uh, kind of the way it is these days. Got to love it. All right. Well, I think that pretty much wraps things up here. Again, appreciate your time. Um, you're a legend. Keep doing what you do. And um, we uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. Good. It's all good. Just keep coming up with this new stuff. We love it. Okay. <laughs> you got it. All right. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, Robert. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.